with their amazing performance to Dance Me Tonight. Take it away, DJ Jack Spears. me
Octavian gifts are subject to service. Animals other than service animals are prohibited. In addition, please keep the aisles of the concourse level and the areas around the concession stand clear. No standing or loitering in these areas be allowed. Fair to comply with the stadium policy may result in removal from the stadium. Please help us make this the best high school football environment in the state of Texas. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Representing Galena Park High School are Jacketeers Captain Andreas Perez and Co-Captain Samantha Romero, Cheer Captain Nadia Timmons and Co-Captain Victoria Guerrero, Mando Gold President Angelina Gonzalez and Vice President Richard Soto, and Student Council Members Matthew Montavayas and Clarissa Alvarado. Representing Niederland High School are Student Council Member Toby Berry, Big Ned Mascot, Cameron Nichols, Varsity Cheerleader, Addison Reedy, Weston Air, Emily Holder, Holder, Twirler, Melody Barnes, and band member, Justin Barrera. In lieu of friendship gift to Galena Park High School, Needham High School Student Council has made a charitable donation to the Community Prayer Care Outreach in honor of Galena Park High School. Introducing the 2023-2024 Needleman High School cheerleaders. Senior social leader Mackenzie Howe. Senior. Welcome to Friday Night Lights with big game coverage of District 9. 5A Division II matchup between the Nederland Bulldogs, 3-1 and one in district and 3-4 and four for the season against the Galena Park Yellow Jackets, 1-3 and three in district and 3-4 and four for the season. And, Carl, for Nederland, this game is so important for their playoff chances. It really is. Galena Park can be the spoiler. Uh, Nederland has got a – Continue to win to stay in the race. It's a given that Port Natchez Grove and Texas City have got two of those four playoff spots. Nederland and Fort Ben Marshall still got work to do. So Nederland has not made the playoffs since 2020. They were two and eight last year. So they've kind of turned it around under Monty Barrow, seven year coach. Definitely a turnaround year for them. They were playing a lot of young kids last year. And the Yellow Jackets, last time they've made the playoffs is 2021. And they were 3-7 and seven last year under fifth-year coach Spiro Amartas. So uh, not a big crowd here tonight, but it's going to be a good game. Between. They're going to be late arriving after watching the Astros-Rangers playoff game. Okay, that's what you said. That's not what you said. What you said was they were going to be late arriving after the, the Houston Astros, Astros won. That's okay. exactly what I said. All right. So you're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. We have Enrique back in the booth. We'll be right back.
This time, would you please rise for the Glen Park High School song? Hey, man. Hey, Rod. You're way further away from us than you normally are. And go ahead and go to the second one, sir. How many counts? As custom here on big game coverage, our own Carl Thies visited with the head coaches of both of the teams and uh, asked them to name three keys to the game. And Carl's going to give you the Nederland Bulldogs keys to the game. Coach Monty Barrow thinks the defense has to keep their eyes disciplined in order to be in the right spots to take care of their responsibilities. Uh, second, his offense needs to avoid negative plays. They don't need to get behind the chains. They need to keep penalties to a minimum. They need to start fast. They have two shutouts in two weeks, uh, second, second, last two second halves. They need to keep their intensity and focus all four quarters. Nederland, uh, both of these teams actually uh, give up more on defense than they score. And Nederland's a minus six on turnovers. Galena Park minus one. So uh, when I see those keys to the game for Nederland, they make sense to uh, turn what they've been doing for the first seven games. How about the keys to the game for the Galena Park Yellow Jackets? Coach Amarantes thinks they need to win the turnover battle. Uh, they need to get a few takeaways and need to score quickly on those takeaways. They need to win the line of scrimmage both sides of the ball, and they need to execute both sides of the ball offensively and defense, and they need to also make uh, big plays on special teams. So, Carl, uh, we've got about another 30 seconds. Give me a player on needle and that you can keep your eyes on tonight. The, the quarterback, he's, he's special. He's been there a couple of years, and uh, he's among the leading rushers and the leading passers eight and Sunday. He's passed for 933 yards, run for 339. He's the second leading passer in the district. He's got eight touchdown passes. Uh, he's also run for seven. Uh, the, he'll, he'll pace the Bulldogs' offense. So there you have it. You're watching big game coverage. And we'll be right back with the starting lineups and the kickoff. at this time, would you please rise first for the presentation of colors to be followed by our national anthem. Tonight's color guard are members of the Galena Park High School Yellow Jacket Army Junior ROTC Battalion. Carrying the United States flag is Cadet First Lieutenant Isaac Villegas. Texas flag is being carried by Cadet First Lieutenant Aiden Sullivan. Left guard is Cadet Major Ashley Martinez. Right guard Cadet Private First Class Antonio Mari. Yellow 
Red Jacket team is led by Sergeant Major Retired Gary Schoolfield and Sergeant First Class Retired Chad Small. And now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. Welcome back to Galena Park ISD. We have the starting lineups. We're going to start with Nederland's defense first. Up front for Nederland's defense, Simon Sturrock, Hollyfield, Green Benton, linebackers Walker, Gudros, Noseguard, McKinney, De La O, cornerback, Norman, cornerback, safeties Ned and Ladner. That was easy for you to say. How about the offense? Offense for the Bulldogs, Sunday's quarterback, Herbert Thomas, the star running back, fullback, Stoker, wide receivers, Tenzo, Babin, Shepard, up front, Mahinka, Hebert, Miranda, Patterson, and Malanson. And for the Galena Park defense? Thomas Valenzuela, Quintana, Boyd, Combs, Barboza, Bernal, Joseph, Barboza, Esqueda, Merlin is a free safety. And for the offense. Wide receiver, Zayas, Williams, uh, up front, Hermosa, Escobar, Pearson, Lopez brothers, tight end, Balderas, wide receiver, Gaspar, fullback, Martinez, and they got listed, Daniel Gomez, quarterback. We saw in warm-ups, so we're using couple other quarterbacks. So the captains have come out on the field. For Needleton, I see Walker. I also see uh, Wynn, along with the quarterback, Sunday. And the last one is Ladner for the Yellow Jackets. It is Balderas, Merlin, Bernal, and Hermoso. Bulldogs win the toss and defer. Glenn Park wants the ball. They're going to receive from the south end zone, the Wallaceville Road side, south end zone. No win tonight. Great night for football. We didn't have any win last night in this matchup. So while I have a minute, let's start off by saying that Carl and I went today to the Blue Bayou Cafe. and uh, Two thumbs up at least two thumbs. Uh, they had excellent chicken and sausage gumbo. Both of us had catfish. And uh, Carl had shrimp with his catfish, and we both had gumbo. And uh, we met the manager, and the, I mean the owner, and it was excellent. It was really good. We're got, going back. Got to watch the Astros. They got lots of TVs in there. They have a live band on Saturday night. Is it Friday night? Friday night. Friday night. And on Wednesday night, they grill outside. Good place to go to. It was a great place. Go over there and say hello to G and at Blue Bayou Cafe, best seafood in town. Also, give a shout out to Judge Joe Stevens. Uh, last night we talked about Joe and all that he does in the North Channel area. And He's a sponsor of the 
Mustangs and the Yellow Jackets, and we give him equal amount of time on both broadcasts. And thank you, Joe, for your support of Galena Park Athletics. Rush in the kick for Nederland. Taken around the 15 and fumbled. And he bobbles it, and now he's just got the kicker to beat, and he breaks free. And I don't think he's going to be touched. 85-yard kickoff return, fumbled it, and everybody broke their lanes. And that was Joshua Williams, I believe. Here's a replay, see if we can get the number. It is Joshua Williams. Sometimes when you have a bobble like that, the defense slows down. And the only person that didn't slow down there was Williams. Is that five or six? We'll confirm it. We'll get one of the guys to go next door and check it out. So that's up and through and a seven yard or seven to nothing lead on the touchdown. I believe it was Joshua Williams, but we will get confirmation on that from next door. And with 11.45, 15 seconds into the game, you're watching big game coverage. We'll be right back. Well, we know it was 85 yards, and it was Joshua Williams. Confirmation. Joshua Williams fumbled it, gathered himself at the 15-yard line, 85 yards later, it's seven to nothing. Pooch kick, fair caught at the 36-yard line, also by number six, Johnson. Needland gets the ball to start the game for them at the 38. I guess we don't do a drive summary by Ford. Uh, we don't do one yet. and We don't get a first down yet. Man, Pasco Law Firm is not happy. 85 yards, you got to get six of them. So as Carl said, Aiden Sunday is quarterback. Thomas is set back. He's, Sunday looks and he, he fumbles the ball. I think they ruled it a catch and then it's picked up. Tenzo, Tenzo catches it. I think it's to Zeno, but I'm not sure. And, and Shepard picks it up. Here's the replay. Gonna pick up one yard. So that was a catch and a fumble and a recovery by Shepard. A lot going on that play. Yeah, for you. For me, it's just second down and nine. I'll catch up in about three minutes. I heard that. Here's a handoff to the right side. That's Thomas. And that's Thomas. Number one, Hubert. He gets down Thomas past the first down marker, nine yard first down. That's Excuse Herbert Thomas. He's getting 10 to the 49. Comes in with 109 carries for 840 yards, nine touchdowns for Thomas. And as Carl said, the offense really is Sunday and Thomas. And Sunday and Thomas. And Thomas and Sunday. And then Tenzo's going to be mixed in there a few times. Yep. Here's a quick pass, and he overthrew his receiver. Or as you said, to Zeno. Which is Shepard. We'll listen to the public address. I, I tried to go find the coaches. Tizino, I believe, is his name, but we'll see how they pronounce it upstairs. Four receivers. Needleman comes into the game more passing than rushing and averaging 324 yards on offense. 
Problem is they give up 398. Here's a good pass complete to to Tratico. Tratico. Going to pick up six to the 45. The squida on the tackle. Third and four. Now we hear the band. So third and four. There's Roland. Got a man wide open. He turns around. There's nobody near him. And he's going to bust down the sideline. That was Tazino. Tazino on a big gain all the way down to the 21, 23 yard pickup for another first down for the Bulldogs. Been pretty efficient throwing. Rowling got a man in his face and now he keeps it and he's running to the 10. He might score. So that's a 21 yard touchdown run by Sunday. Scored on Friday. Sunday scored on Friday. So he comes into the game with 156 yards rushing. Actually, did you say 339 rushing for him? Yes. And he 156 throwing. So that's his eighth rushing touchdown for Aiden Sunday, and he ties the game up, pending an extra point. Kick is up, and it's through. The kicker is Babbin. Oh, no, take that back. The kickoff, the extra point by was Resch. Resch. So it's 7-7 seven, seven with 8.35 left in the first quarter. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. Now we told you last night if he was watching the broadcast when the Astros score or do something special, Enrique gets on top of the desk and starts doing cartwheels. And so, he was just doing cartwheels. Yeah, so I, I don't and know the de- I don't know the details. I'd put him on speakerphone here, but uh, I hear the Astros took the lead. So, Carl, give me a four drive summary. Bulldogs go 62 yards, six plays. Sunday with the keeper, 21 yards. Resch with the extra point kick. Our score is tied 7-7. 8.35 left in the first quarter. Resch, punch, punching it, catch it, somebody. He was not going to have it returned. He didn't want to kick deep. Well, after what happened a while ago, I understand that move. So, Carl, that should be out of bounds plus five. That's the choice of the receiving team. They can make them re-kick or add five yards. Where, it, where it's at, I think they're going to take the ball yeah, plus I, five right there. I do, too. It's going to be somewhere near the 50. So it's at the 42 or 43. Surely they get a penalty here. There's a flag thrown. Looks like they're spotting the ball at the 40, 45. The referee's talking to the Bulldog coach. I'm not sure why. Wanting to see if he wants to go to Blue Buy Cafe tomorrow. (laughs) Or our other favorite, Bonfire Wings. So they're going to take the ball at the 40. What are they doing here? The down box is, yeah, they, they've got to put it at the fifty. There we go. No, it, it all right. It's the forty-eight. So they Glenn, did it correct. Yep, it was at the forty-three spot file. So now they we can play. And uh, it's a handoff right off the middle, and we have a new quarterback tonight. It's not Gomez. It's Sanye. So he hands it off to. Marti- Francisco Martinez. So we'll just keep our eyes peeled tonight. We, we believe they're going to use uh, two or three quarterbacks. But right now, it's Jacob Sonier, senior, 
Six foot, 175 pounds. Two yard pickup, second and eight. Not in the district leaders, but here is Sonia. He is a lefty rolling and I mean, I don't know how you have a guy more open than what he had, and he, he missed him. He was throwing to Balderas. And uh, Galena Park comes into the game with just under 230 yards for the season, seven games. So that's less than 25 yards a game on the passing. And we kind of saw an example of that right there. Right there. That's about all you need to know why they run this flex bone offense. Keep it on the ground, fellas. And get five or six every play. Move I have them, not move seen, them chains. seen Galena Park run three offensive receivers. And here's why. And he didn't get. I don't think he got it back to the line of scrimmage, so that's going to be grounding. Here comes the side judge, side judge head linesman. I think it's going to be a penalty. There it is. <laughs> So he didn't get it back to the line of scrimmage. That's intentional grounding. You're going to see the referee put his hand behind his back here. That's going to be a five-yard penalty and loss of down, so it'll be fourth down. There's the behind the, the head. Go so, move it. So the punting is handled by Barboza tonight. Gomez, we don't know. I see him down on the sidelines, but he's not. He's he usually punts and and quarterback, but uh, I don't. He's dressed out, so we're not sure. Moves the ball back to the 35-yard line, fourth down. They're back to receive at the 35. Good snap and almost blocked. Fielded at the 35 by Tazino, and he was running east and west. Now he's north and south, and he's going to go in. 65-yard touchdown. Untouched. So uh, the, you have there a flag. is a penalty over here. I thought I saw a blocking in the back, but I wasn't 100% sure. Flagged at the 46-yard line. So that punt is coming back. Here's an Xfinity replay. See how close they got to it. But there. That'd be a 10 yard penalty. Spot foul. They spotted it at the 44. So how many yards? He said 15. So it should be back somewhere around the 15 yards. They're marking off the 39. That's where I've got it. So the Bulldogs, who took over from the 38 while ago and scored. 39-yard line. 7-22. Our score tied 7-7. Most of their offense, Carl, was passing. Very few yards on the ground with Thomas. Thomas is in the backfield with Sunday. Bad snap. Sunday. Uh, in yikes mode. Is <laughs> you know, we didn't hear yikes mode last night all night long. I kind of missed it. But that was definitely well, yikes mode. Sunday was definitely trying to pick it up. Didn't kick it, but picked it up and was screaming yikes. Yes. For those just listening to Carl, that's his uh, way of saying Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Get out of the way. Anybody want this ball? 12-yard loss. So here's a handoff to Thomas. He breaks free. Picks up about, let's call it seven. Brings up third down and 16. Tackled on the play by Bernal. So big third down for the Bulldogs. So they're going to put three receivers over here to the right. They've got uh, Thomas in the backfield. Let's see what Galena Park does. They need to get another guy over here right now. you got two receiver, three receivers and two guys. You might get a timeout by. 
I think this is an official's timeout. But we have a timeout on the field. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. We'll be right back. Well, it's uh, two men on with one out, and Presley's pitching. And I, I know what Enrique does when the Astros do something good. We don't know what he does when they win the ball game. When they blow it, he might. We we got Chris up here with him though. So if he if he does a blowout, we got somebody else up here. Chris is going to pinch hit. Third and fourteen for the Bulldogs. Sunday rolling to his right, doesn't see the guy behind him, throws it deep, out of bounds. Threw it to. Uh, some fans in the stands. And he threw it for the backup punter over there on the sideline. So they're going to punt. All right, Enrique, we, we, we're doing the ball game, so we ain't got time to watch this this uh, skate artist job by Presley. So I expect to see you dancing on top of the table in about another minute. You're going to take that horse head off and be yeah. dancing for the Astros. He started neighing last night when the two horses came by. Nay! You know, I was like, wow, calm down, Enrique. So here you go. Here's the punt. Rush into punt. And it's backing up. And it's on about the 44-yard line. So Galena Park has had great field position. They started last time at 48, had to punt three and out. 22-yard punt. Has Galena Park had a first down yet? Have not. Well, I'm going to talk about Pasco Law Firm anyhow. Did you know they are the Texas goat? We have a horse and a goat. And when you win, we win. That's PascoLawFirm.com. So another set and a keeper. And Kanye keeps the ball. It looks like he gets about seven yards, and that time they were in the two back off offense and uh, two receivers. Sonny gets nine. It looks like Coach Armentos is making some uh, changes on offense a little bit with this new quarterback. Cormier is a senior. He keeps it again, and he needs to go where he started. Blow the whistle, ref. Sonia on the keeper. Nothing. He probably lost the yard. So he was tackled by Holyfield. They're going to give him the line of scrimmage. Still no gain. Third and one. Needleland giving up 398 yards on defense. They lost last week. Big game to Fort Bend Marshall, 21 to 19, Carl. Both those teams are fighting for third and fourth. So he keeps it and he barely gets two yards, but he gets a first down and there you go, Pasco Law Firm. When you win, we win. Their first first down for Galena Park. Sonny's going to get two. Do you remember last week's ball game with Galena Park? I do. 50 to 23 against Santa Fe, and they ran the clock the whole second half, right? Yes. That that whole second half lasted about 15 minutes. All right, Enrique is dancing on he's, top of the. He's doing cheerleading. So they doing won. gymnastics. Presley did the job coming back game six with a 3-2 lead. I was, that's Martinez. I was telling Carl at, at lunch, dinner tonight that uh, 
I was at the Washington series where not one home team won a game when Washington took the series here. And, and so far in the series, the Rangers 0-3 at home. Francisco Martinez picks up seven, second and three for the Yellow Jackets. Jacket signaling the play. Sonia got setbacks on each side. I snap, snap. fall on it. He does. About a nine yard loss. That's costly for this offense. This is back to the 48, 11 yard loss. Third and 14 for the Yellow Jackets. So third down, big play for the Yellow Jackets who had crossed. Midfield. Lefty throwing it up for grabs. That might be face guarding. They didn't call it. It was called last night, wasn't it, buddy? One time. Fourth and 14. So the Astros with a three-run home run by Altuve, uh, his 25th, I believe, in playoff history. And, uh, you know, I love the fact they boo him because it just gets him going. I think they ought to boo him at home. He might think he's playing on the road. Jim Crane ought to consider playing them all on the road. Putting them all in blue uniforms and, and uh, booing. And they uh, – Jacket uh, punt going to go roll dead at the eight-yard line. Astros will think they're playing on the road. So, one win out of two to go back to the World Series and defend their title. 44-yard punt dead at the eight. Carl, I'm talking about the Astros here. Actually going to skip the football down at the nine. So, Nederland gets the ball at the nine-yard line. That's a great punt. really was. 2.13 left in the first quarter, still 7-7. Seven, seven. Both offenses sputtering a little bit. Nederland and Galena Park, the last two possessions, both punting. So, three punts with one first down. Having a punting contest. Yes. Here's a handoff. Nope, a fake. And Sunday. Sunday kept it. Let's see where he got out at the 11 yard line. 16. No, 16. Yard. So a seven yard pickup. Sunday with, as Carl said, 339 yards rushing and 156 passing. His passing numbers, though, Carl, eight touchdowns, but five interceptions. Yeah. They have a minus six on the turnover ratio, so those short passes make a lot of sense. So here's a handoff Thomas. to Thomas, and he breaks free for a first down all the way to the 25, so that's a nine-yard pickup. And another first down for Needler in their third. Actually, their fourth. Did you make me miss one? Thomas now three carries, 27 yards. I said stay stay to the play-by-play -play and you do the stats. Is that what you're saying? I need all the help I can get. That's what your wife told me. So That's three, what Enrique told me. <laughs> three receivers. That's what everybody tells me. Five receivers in the packet, nobody back, so they better get rid of the ball fast. He's flushed out of the pocket, tackled from behind on a great shoestring shoestring tackle. That's easy for you to say. No, it wasn't. And uh, Bernal actually checked that. It was Barboza. Barboza comes in with 41 tackles on the season. Picks up four yards, second six. One of the leading tacklers for Galena Park, and you can see why. Second and let's call it five even. That didn't sound right, did it? Five even. 
I'm calling it second and six. All right. So here's a handoff to Thomas. He breaks free for two. Thomas came in with 840 yards with nine touchdowns. Accounting for 16 of their touchdowns. Sunday picking up his eighth touchdown already tonight. Making a late substitution here. Five men on the line. Now they shift the guy over. It looks like they're going to run left. Now he got 14 seconds left in the first quarter. I think they're going to get this off, but they don't look like they're in a big hurry. They might be delaying. Nope, they hand it off on an end around. They had uh, Thomas, Thomas in the slot. He gets all the way to the 42, a 10-yard first down run by Thomas. To end the first quarter. And that's going to end the first quarter with the score, 7-7. Seven, seven. You're watching big game coverage produced by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production with Enrique and Chris. We're going to give him an assist tonight. I was watching the replay of Altuve, and unlike Garcia of the Rangers, Altuve shows him how to act when you hit a home run. You just act like you've been there before. He most certainly has 25 times in postseason, and he just keeps adding a notch. I think he wants to play in Globe Life every game. Yeah, he, he amazing. So here's the start of the second quarter, and there's a flag at probably all sides on Galena Park. I want to give a shout out to Commissioner Adrian Garcia. Adrian Garcia, County Commissioner, and we thank him for all his support of North Shore and Galena Park Yellow Jackets football, and thank you for all that you do, Mr. Garcia. As you said, Galena Park lines up in the neutral zone, second penalty. Now first and five at the 46-yard line. So Needland, who started this drive at their nine, uh, doing two, it. Two first downs later. Doing a great job of moving the football. A couple big plays. Here is a handoff to Thomas, and I didn't know if he was going to hand it off or not. Holding on, and he missed him, and then he missed him again. And he comes back as and Combs. Eight of the 11 jackets are on him. He loses a few yards. He was spinning, and they could put him in the spin cycle. He couldn't get out of it. Well, they're acting like his forward progress was about the line of scrimmage. And it was. Actually, it was about a yard, yard short. But So now it's third down. No, second and six. Loses one. First and five, loses one. Carl, I'm going to quit buying you lunch. I just need you to go to a stat class with me. <laughs> or two. Or two. I'm slow in math, Carl. Here's a pass to the 48. Pickup of three, and that is thrown to Shepard, Slade Shepard. So now it's third down, right? Sir? That is that right. is correct. That's good. I, I'm pretty sharp that. Three Count. comes you're, after two. You're good at counting. Okay. All right. Now, sometimes third and three. three doesn't come after two. One comes after two. But in this case, three does. So, you see the receivers lined up on your right side. And once again, we get excellent coverage here from the camera crew upstairs. Outstanding. It's one of the best camera crews that we have here on big game coverage. There's a swing pass to Thomas. Those guys do a great, great job upstairs. So 
And that's the third first down for the Bulldogs. Kiff Thomas, five on the swing pass. Sixth first down for the, for the Bulldogs. He's done pretty good tonight. His completion rate's pretty high. Now five of seven passing yep. for 39 yards for Sunday. Not a lot of yards. Like I said, he has five interceptions, so they're keeping him short. 10.45 on the clock, as you see. A fumble, and this time. Uh, Sunday didn't get it to Thomas. Thomas, yeah, I think he missed his belly. He was juggling the ball. I, did they try to snap right back to him? That's an Xfinity replay. He would have ate at Blue Bayou Cafe today. He would have not dropped that ball. Bulldogs lose back to the 52-yard loss. Second down. So he keeps it Sunday, right up the middle, gets near the 40-yard line, pick up of 10. See where they mark it. Now they look act like they're fumbling. No, nope, we have a timeout on the field, and we're going to take it with them. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. We'll be right back. So Squida is off the field. It's third down. Third down and three to go for the Nederland. You got all kind of options here. Hands off to Thomas. Sweeps left and then picks up the first down. Let's see where they mark it. It looks like the 33, so an eight-yard pickup. Seven, first down. He just kind of glides, doesn't he? He, he doesn't. He's not a real power back more finesse and speed, but he's quick. Thomas now 43 yards on six carries this evening. Comes into the game averaging 7.7 .7 yards per carry. Sunday looking, got a man, Thomas out of the backfield, and he's gonna get down to about the 27, so a six yard pass to Thomas, his first reception. He had 15 catches for 154 yards with one touchdown coming into tonight's game. That's catch number 16. Second four. Pretty much had the same backfield all night. Sunday looking right, throws it for a first down complete to Ladner, I believe. So another first down, five first downs on the play. I mean, on the drive that started at the nine. It's going to take Carl 30 minutes to get that drive summary if they score. So here's a pass to the uh, corner of the end zone, and he overthrows it. He was throwing to Ladner again. Just barely overthrew it, right Sh off his fingertips, really. Shouldn't have clipped his fingernails. Catchable ball. So second and go, or second and 10 from the 20.
7-7 game here. It seems like there's been more offense, but not much scoring. So here's a fake quick pitch over here to, to Zeno, and he gets down to about the 12-yard line, so an eight-yard pickup, third down. Third and three. They can get down to the 10 to get a first down. Stay tuned for halftime. You'll have some halftime entertainment with the bands. Both bands finally showed up. Enrique thought he was going to have to go down there and put the horse back on. I think he's short there, Carl. Looks like he fourth down and a, a yard, two-yard carry for Thomas Bernal on the tackle. Now Galena Park brings in. Aiden Salazar, Jumbo. six foot one, three hundred pounds. They better not run up it off the nose guard. Let's see what they do here. They only need a yard. Probably a keeper. Yep. Quarterback keeper by Sunday. Sunday looks like he gets across to about the nine yard line, picks up two yards and another Pick, first down. He picks up one yard, but statistically he's gonna pick up two yards. Gonna go down to the nine. You got such good camera crew. Leave it right there. You can see the crown in the field. Um, that is great camera work. Just right, right between those hash marks. So here is a handoff to Thomas, and he's going to go in unscathed from the nine. ten yard, nine yard line. Let's call it. You calling it nine or ten? Nine. So a nine yard. Touchdown run for Thomas, his first of the night, and that makes 10 on Touchdowns. the season for Thomas. So here is uh, Rish in the kick. Yeah, there's your replay. Lance Rish coming in for the extra point. It looks like it's up and it's good. So with 6.53, the score is 14 to seven in favor of the Lederland Bulldogs. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Productions. We'll be right back. So I need a four-drive summary. How about the Bulldogs go 91 yards in 18 plays? Wow. Going to get six first downs along the way. Thomas, nine-yard touchdown run. Resch extra point kick good. Needle now leads 14-7 to over Galena Park. 6.53 second quarter. All right, Mr. Statistician, since I'm not allowed to speak on stats, how many first downs does the Galena Park have? I show one. That is correct. So he feels it. He should have just fair caught it at the 10, and he gets out to about the 15. And if he fair catches, be... he comes up to the 25. Yep. And as Rick said, didn't make a good decision that time. Of course, he did run uh, 85 yards while ago, so yep. Joshua Williams. But when you're kind of going backwards, so let's see where they're putting the ball, 17. 17. So Galena Park, which is not ordinarily a quick strike offense, they can break one off. What I'm trying to say is they're not a quick strike offense running a two-minute drill throwing the ball. I got you. So here's a misdirection play, as Carl calls it. And that was to Balderas. Faked to the right and then came back to the left for a two-yard gain. Well, that's his first carry of the night. 
Picks up two. Yeah, Galena Park really uh, a punt with their first, second possession, and then a first down and another punt, and then this possession. So Two punts and a kickoff return. Needleland has done a great job keeping them off the field with that ball control, long offensive 91-yard drive. There's a pitch to the right for Joshua Williams. And, man, that's a penalty. He either grabbed him by the horse collar or we'll see where they spot it. Got two watch, watch it here. Watch his head go back. Yeah, that's horse collar. If he didn't have a horse collar, he had his ear. So after about an eight-yard run, so that's going to be another first down brought to you by Pasco Law Firm. When you win, we win. Going to take the ball up to the 43-yard line. Really, it was an uh, end around for Joshua Williams. They have to get two first downs there. Two? Get an eight-yard first down and then a 15-yard add-on. So do I have to say Pasco Law Firm twice? Back to back. All right. When you win, you win. You it's easy win, for you to say win again. Twice. Rolling to his left, has a man open, and uh, he throws it too hard for Martinez. Is he 0 for 2 or 0 for 3? 0 for 4. 0 for 4. He's very consistent. So there's the gold that we were told needle in black and gold. The band. When you, when you see them, you'll know. That's the uniforms I remember from last year. Here, Enrique didn't even think Needleland had a had a ban. He thinks probably they don't even have a McDonald's down there. You know, Enrique passed up a free meal today, Carl. He had to take care of business at Blue Bayou Cafe. Right over there on I-10, best seafood in town. Here's a toss to the left, and that is another penalty coming out of there, Balderas. Speaking of food, Bonfire Wings, they have Cajun Creole also, and uh, they have Buffalo Wild Wings and all other kind of wings. They have Boudin Balls and they also have uh, sausage, chicken and sausage gumbo. And it's all good. It's it's all good. We, we, we're we getting spoiled by uh, Bonfire Wings and Blue Bayou Cafe. All we need to find is about three more, and we can take turns where we're eating at. Max them up 10 yards, second and 20. I'm sure Gerald Sanchez would take about three more restaurants, and we'd just take turns. Clean apart now three penalties for 35. You tell them they're going the wrong direction? I think they know that. I don't know. Another penalty. They've been penalized tonight. And when you're running an offense like the Yellow Jackets. That's Martinez again. Penalties really kill you, don't they, Carl? They definitely do. Because you're just not you're, – you're set up for those handoffs to get three, four, five yards. But and when you pick up seven or eight, it's not easy. Yeah, but when you get penalized five, ten yards, then it turns in you need five, six yards per carry. And that sets up a third and 17 play right here. Exactly. That's well, the, when coaches say they're behind the chains. That's what they're talking about right there. That's right. And you're talking about a quarterback that's 0-4 and, four and uh, a team that has less than 250 yards passing. So they need to keep it simple. And he gets sacked. Left-handed passer rolling to his right. Yep, and he got sacked by Holyfield. He could not turn. Here's a replay by Xfinity. He never got to turn his body, and I think he kind of wanted to hand it off to he Williams. To, he wanted to go hot potato with somebody. So there was another penalty on the left side over there. They're going to decline the penalty. An illegal block. Punt team coming in for Glen Park. So let me set this up for you, Carl. Needleland is going to get the ball back. 
They have all three timeouts. They're leading by seven. Let's say they put seven more points on the board right here. And, they're gonna the and they get the ball back. back third quarter. You're talking about a 28-point turn here if Galena Park can't stop them. And they're going to get the, the ball in excellent field position. How about those Astros? How about them Astros? How about them Astros? Enrique told me they were coming back. So did you. I, I was Mr. Negativity. There's, you better stay away from that young man. Punt's going to roll dead at the 29-yard line. 43-yard punt. Did you hear Coach Barrow up here? Yeah. Get away. Get away. Get away. <laughs> Don't get lit up. Get away. Get away from the ball. I guarantee you when he went over the sidelines, uh, somebody went up to him and said, what are you thinking? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're not thinking. That's it. Stand over here by me if you're not going to think. So it's the 29 that Needleland gets. They just drove 91 yards. How many minutes did they take off? Six minutes they, or 7.16 off the clock. Yeah, they don't have that many minutes. They only have three timeouts. So here's a quick slant. Great tackle. I mean a great tackle. The ball was thrown to Shepard. Watch this replay. Shepard's going to lose one. That's a form tackle. That was an Xfinity replay. Tackled on the play, I believe, by Marshall. Yes, sir, Lewis Marshall. Five foot four, 140 pounds. I think your catfish weighed more than that today. I think it did, too. The low snap, hands off to Thomas, and he rolls around the right side for about a five-yard gain, third down. I always get a kick out of the fact that he runs 25 yards to game five or that, four. That, that means you're going a lot of east and west and not north and south. So third down. Seven to go. 309 left. Well, they he barked, and I think they drew him off sides again. Now, I thought I saw somebody on needle and jump, but maybe it was to uh, protect himself. It was a hard count. Clean Park offsides again. Man, they've been penalized. Four for 40 yards now. So third and seven is a lot tougher than third and two. The ball is spotted. Now at the 37 the yard line. 37 yard line. They get to get to the 39. So like I said, two yards is a lot easier than seven. Thomas is to the left of Sunday. Check that. New back in the game. That is Mitchell, Landon Mitchell. Gets to the 43, 11-yard carry. First down for Mitchell. Let's do six-yard carry because of that penalty. Oh, that's right. They had not moved the, you're right, six yards. First down. I hate it when I'm right. I know it. I hate it, too. So here's a call to Mitchell. I got Enrique standing on top of the desk, and your head can't get through the door. That's it. I've Chris is over there going, what Chris, in the Chris world gonna have I got into? Chris is going to help me get my head through the door. Yeah. You're going to need a chisel. And a hammer. With that head. <laughs> He's, you already had a chisel taken That's, to him. What's uh, <laughs> that, Carl? It had, it had five and a half hours worth of work on my head. Yep. And brain surgery. Some people say they put a new one in there. Yeah. So, did he get it first there? He didn't I think indicate. it's short. It's close. It looks like it's at the 48. And they need to get to the other side of the 40. So, it's about a yard, yard short. short. There's a timeout on the field. We're going to take it with them. We'll be right back.
Carl, if you're in the mood to buy a new car, and you probably are, a new truck, you need to go to McCree Ford. That's my dealer, McCree Ford, M-C-R-E-E -E Ford, just in time to give yourself a nice present for Christmas. Third and one. Speaking of Christmas, if you have some electrical needs, call Mr. Electric, Mr. Electric, for all your electrical needs. Here's a handoff to the left side, and I believe that's Thomas. Remember why you were Thomas in Montana. And it looks like he got uh, first down, picked up two yards. Hitman number 37, Aubrey Joseph. So that's two first downs on this drive that started at their own 29. Tenth first down for Needlin. Thomas now 58 yards in 10 carries. Sunday looking left, nothing. Rose right. Now he's going to run and going to get about nine yards, eight. Let's see where they are. Eight yards before. Well, now they're going to mark it at nine yards. Uh, here's an Xfinity replay. He looks left and then he gets away from a defender. He's got pretty good speed. He didn't want to get hit by Bernal. So it is an eight yard gain. 132 left. They're going to have to get a move on it. They Sunday now 57 yards on eight carries. The ball spotted on the 38. Hands off to Thomas. He gets down to the 32, so a six yard gain. Another first down. Trying to. Trying second and third effort to try to get loose. Could never get his foot loose. Clock stopped on the first down as they moved the chains. Now it's rolling. Picks up six yards. Valina Park having to call a timeout because they couldn't get players off the field. So you're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and produced by the Texas Sports Production. We'll be right back. Rick Blunt and Carl Thies back here at Galena Park Stadium, and they just ran a commercial on the scoreboard for Bonfire Wings, and I was thinking as they were showing them, mixing it up, how good that place is. Very, very good place. So if you're in the mood for a late-night snack, go to Bonfire Wings. Tell them Rick and Carl said hello. You might run into us. If you go before the game, you might run into us. There's a good chance. We got two games next week back to back here. Here is Sunday looking deep. Got a man open and just overthrew. He was trying to throw to, to Zeno. I was wondering when they were going to take a shot in the end zone. Here's a replay of the previous first down run by Thomas. Now they're bringing it back with a penalty. Yep. Carl, you've been busy uh, totaling up that penalty column tonight. That's a 10-yard penalty. Needle Hold now four, four penalties for 45. Moves the ball all the way back to the 43-yard line. they got to get to the 23 to get a first. Here's first and 20. Sunday rolling. Throws it over here to Babin to about the 31-yard line. So is that like a nine-yard pickup? I can't see where they're marking it. Yeah, let's call it ten. Ten pickup. Second down. Got out of bounds. Needland still has two timeouts left, I believe. They need a ten more yards to pick up this first down. So he's got time. Now he's going to roll. Got a man, but he's got coverage. He just... Bad throw there, overthrew his intended receiver, Babin. 
So now it's third down, 51 seconds left. There's an Xfinity replay. You can see how, how he overthrew his guy. Good coverage, by the way, by Galena Park. Well, Carl, where are you going to be at tomorrow where they can watch big game coverage? One o'clock, Mercer Stadium, Kempner playing Forsher, Forsher State ranked. And you get that double play combo tomorrow. The Astros are off. There's a great pass out route by Babin for about a 12 yard gain. Picks up another first down, four first downs. Glenn Park just seems like they cannot defend the pass. Have several guys with interceptions, but uh, Sunday's just picking them apart. Sunday now 11 of 15 passing for 79 yards. Much better than his season coming into it. Bevin's second catch, second 10-yard catch for 20. Looking right. Got the guy that came out of the backfield, I believe that's to Zeno. Nine yards, and they're going to see a timeout here. Timeout on the field. You're watching big game coverage. We'll be right back. Carl, I played golf yesterday with a North Shore Rotary out in Newport and had a great time, and I just wanted to tell you what a great club the Rotary Club is. And uh, I had a blast. I played with Wayne O'Quinn and a couple other local North Shore businessmen and treated like first class. The Rotary does everything first class. Don't they still do that big catfish? And Oh, yeah fundraiser every year but we ain't got time to talk about more food okay okay let's talk about rotary or <laughs> judge joe stevens <laughs> or commissioner garcia yes they still do uh crawfish and there's a pass in the corner do you buy tickets for that i uh, do i do too i've been uh buying raffle tickets for about 20 years but i haven't ever won that vehicle yet but this year they let me slip through. Usually I have two or three guys call me. And, uh, this year I didn't have any, and I shouldn't say that because I'll have 18 of them calling me this next year. We'll have four of them call you tomorrow. Exactly. I don't know when they're doing that. I thought it was the spring. Third down, two, 31 seconds. They got one more timeout left, so they can run a ball, run the ball here. They throw it, and that was a first really bad pass by Sunday. He'd have thrown it up, it would have been intercepted. So fourth down, they moved the ball all the way from their 29-yard line. They're going to get three points here, Carl, or they're going to go for the fourth? I think with one timeout, they may run a play, and then that they can spike it and go twice in the end zone. It would be one great timeout. of one time out, they could just kick a field goal if they are not short. I'd look for – well, the quarterback's going to play uh, in the shotgun, so now they're going to have a timeout by who? Clean the park. They, they're going to try to hard count and get them drawn off sides. So you're watching big game coverage produced by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. We'll be right back. So it's fourth and one, 25 seconds left in the first half. And let's see if Needlin has 
Carl has said they have time to uh, run a play and on the ground. They pick up the first down. They can either run up and spike it or they can use a timeout, which would be their last one. I think they're going to hand to Thomas. He's going to. Well, he, he, they was tackled, and then he got free, and now he's going to score. Broke two tackles. He broke two tackles, and the ball was a 14-yard touchdown run for Thomas, who should have been stopped for a loss and turnover and downs. He gets his 11th touchdown run after a nine-yard touchdown run in the first quarter to put Needleland up 20-7, to seven, pending an extra point. There's the replay by Xfinity. He definitely could have been stopped twice. It's kind of uh, tough on your defense there, Carl. Yeah, it really is. So here is the extra point try. The snap is up. The kick is through. And with 15 seconds left, it's 21-7 to seven in favor of the Bulldogs. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network. And Texas Sports Productions, produced by Enrique and Chris. We'll be right back. Oh, give me that Ford replay drive summary with athleticsdepartment.com. Needleland moves 71 yards, 14 plays, take 358 off the clock. Thomas is his second touchdown. This one on a fourth down on one play, 14-yard touchdown. Resh extra point good. Needleland now leads 21-7 to over Galena Park. 15 seconds left in the second quarter. So here's the kick return, and it's fielded at the 10. And I believe that is Williams. Nope, check it. It is Combs. He gets to about the 27 or so, and that's where it's going to be marked. Go well, short, short play, short pass, and then one Hail Mary. If you just turned in, tuned in, you missed the opening kickoff return of 85 yards by Joshua Williams to put the Yellow Jackets up 7 nothing, and now it's then since that time, it's been all Nederland with 21 unanswered points to take a 21-7 to lead most likely into halftime. And Nederland gets the ball to start the second half. I think they're just going to hand it off. Yep, toss sweep. And what a tackle. Hello by Mr. Walker to Mr. Williams. And that's going to be the end of the first half. Stay tuned for a great halftime production. And uh, your score at halftime, Nederland Bulldogs 21, Galena Park Yellow Jackets 7. We'll be back in about 28 minutes to uh, finish the third and fourth quarter.
The Westerners will be performing a Jill Tong to a matchup of Journey.
That was the Nederland band ending up with the Texas A&M fight song as the Galena Park band gets ready to come out on the field. Just to give you an update on this game, uh, as I'd said right at the end of the second half, Galena Park starts the game off with an 85-yard kickoff by Joshua Williams to go up 7-0. Nederland gets the ball at their own 38. And capped off by a 21-yard run by the quarterback, Aiden Sunday, his eighth touchdown on the ground this season. Put the game 7-7. Glenna Park punted. North Shore, I mean, Nederland punted. Glenna Park punted again. And then Nederland starting on their own nine-yard line that capped over with the end of the first quarter and the beginning of the second quarter. Ran seven minutes or so off the clock. And had a 91-yard touchdown drive. Capped off by a nine-yard touchdown run by their feature back, Hubert Thomas, to put them up 14-7. Galena Park then got the ball on the 17, made two first downs and punted. Needleland marched down with a 81-yard drive with a 14-yard touchdown run by Thomas right at the end of the half to put Nederland up 21 to seven. So that's where we're at in the game. And now sit back and enjoy the Yellow Jacket Marching Band.
Great job by the Galena Park Band. So at this time, we're going to get Carl Thieves with athleticsdepartment.com. It's athleticsdepartment.com. He's going to give us some stats before the teams come back out on the field and we get the second half uh, going. And uh, my guess is, Carl, Galena Park doesn't have many yards offensively. They start off with a bang with that Joshua Williams 85-yard uh, kickoff return to start the game. And they had 15 offensive snaps in the first half for 13 yards of offense. Uh, three first downs, two by penalty. Galena Park rushed the ball 11 times for 13 yards. They had four incomplete passes. Total stats, 15 offensive snaps, 13 yards offense for the Yellow Jackets. That's pretty bad. It's not very good. Nederland, uh, much better. Nederland, 219 yards offense, 13 first downs, 24 rush plays for 131 yards. Uh, Herbert Thomas, uh, 12 carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Aiden Sunday, the quarterback, eight carries, 57 yards, one touchdown. Aiden Sunday's 12 of 18 passing for 88 yards. Uh, Tesno, Tesno, the leading receiver, four catches, 42. Uh, again, Sunday's 12 of 18 passing for 88 yards and uh, eight carries for 57 yards uh, rushing for Sunday. So Nederland gets the ball back if Galena Park will come back on the field. I think they went to the Bluegrass Festival in Jacinta City. They, uh, they're all lined up. I don't know what they're waiting on. They might get a penalty. Is the play clock started yet? No. So here they finally come. I think they were waiting on a, either a football they or They were waiting a on a football. Galena Park kicks their ball. and Yeah. I fell on the ball and lined up for a kickoff now. So the score as we head into this is 21 to 7 as we start the second half. And as Carl said, Needleland won the toss and deferred, so they're going to get the ball back. We had talked about the fact that if they could score after getting the ball back, it'd be a 28 point swing. swing. It's like hanging ice up here in the press box. It's not quite as cold as it was last night. Last night was sub-zero up here. <laughs> People are breaking icicle sticks. It was cold. So here is the pooch kick, fair caught at the 38-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. They're going to mark it at 36. So Needleland, basically their offense, if I heard you correctly, was Tazino, Thomas, and Sunday. That's exactly right. Needleland comes out, 36-yard line, first and 10. Three package receivers up top, one single coverage down here on the bottom. Thomas to the right of Sunday. Hands off to Thomas. And Thomas is Number tough one, to bring down. He gets four there. yards, spins, four and kind of spun around. And he, he, he looked like a pinball machine there. And now Thomas, 81 yards on 13 carries. That front line of Mojica, Herbert, Miranda, Paterson. I think that's probably Patterson and Melicon. They're doing a great job getting off. So we got a timeout on the field. You're watching big game coverage. We'll be right back. So the player on the field is cleared and everything's good. Give a shout out to Judge Joe Stevens. Joe who sponsors athletic events all over North Shore and 
Galena Park area. So thank you so much, Joe, for your support. And uh, there is a great run by Thomas as he gets oh, all the way to the 46. He runs out of bounds near the so uh, about a 15-yard gain there, Carl? 16 yards. I didn't know where they spotted it, but a first down. On the line, 45, obviously. I'm sure if the, uh, if the uh, North Shore goes to the playoffs and goes far, we'll, we'll be seeing Judge Joe. Definitely will. Somewhere. He shows up at all those games. Uh, here's a keeper. And he's going to get around the corner and steps out about a nine-yard gain for Sunday. Sunday faked the ball to Thomas, and about three people tackled Thomas. <laughs> Pulled it. That's what you want, isn't it? That's exactly what you want. Did a great play fake. Thomas wanted to, wanted to carry out the fake, and he didn't want people beating on him. Second and two. Fakes, hand throws over here, and if the defender would have been looking up, he might have picked that off and ran, but that's Tizino that he overthrew. I believe that's, uh, can't get a number over here on the, yeah, I thought that was Combs. Combs was driving his receiver back which was Shepard, and the ball went right by him. So third down, two. Here comes Mr. Thomas. Nope, they're going to try to throw it deep. He's got a man open. Hits him at the five, down to the three-yard line is Shepard. 35-yard pass play from Sunday to Shepard, the longest throw of the game. Sets up, hits him in stride about the two-yard line. Thank you for that Xfinity replay upstairs, guys. Or was that Enrique? Enrique's fixing to get back up on the desk, Carl. So here's a keeper by Sunday. He's gonna be stopped short. I like all the pink yellow yellow jackets are wearing. These team color schemes are similar, right? Yes, they are black and, black black and, and gold. gold. Sunday's gonna get I don't think he got anything. Still second and three. Twenty one seven, if you're just joining. Thanks for the camera work upstairs. We're getting spoiled with this. There's a handoff to Thomas, and he's going to go in for his third touchdown. So a three-yard touchdown run for Thomas. Thomas now with even 100 yards on 15 carries. Third touchdown of the night for Thomas. So that's his 12th touchdown on the season. And you see on the replay, he goes right between the guard and the tackle. Just great seal blocks. He was touched, but he was behind him when they touched him. He had already broke through the line. The kick is up, and it is through the upright. Lance Resch kick is good. So it's 28 to seven. You're watching big game coverage Powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production will be back with a four drive summer. Carl Thies, athleticsdepartment.com has the Ford Drive summary. The Bulldogs go 64 yards in seven plays, take 203 off the clock. 
Thomas's third touchdown in a row. This time a three-yard touchdown. Lance Reich kicked good. Nederland now leads 28-7. 9.57 left in the third quarter. We had that 14-point turnaround, Carl, that we talked about. They scored in the end of the second quarter and gets the ball back and score again at the beginning of the third. And that's a 14-point swing. Any way you look at it. Caught at the three. Breaks straight up the middle. Still running. And that is going to be Williams. Williams, the major offense for the Yellow Jackets. So, Galena Park gets the ball on the 37. Great field position. Carl, there's not much you can – you're not going to win many ball games if you got less than 50 yards total offense in a whole half. And less than 20. Well, I was trying to be nice. So, let's see if we got uh, – nope, same quarterback. Handoff die play and picks up 13 yards. Martinez, and that's a – Equals their first half yardage on one play. <laughs> That first down brought to you by Pasco Law Firm, the Texas GOAT. When you win, we win. PascoLawFirm.com. Fourth first down for the Jackets. That was really just a simple dive play for Martinez with great execution on the front line. There's a pitch. And that is to uh, Balderas. He picks up four. Gets to the 46-yard line. Four-yard gain. Still have Sanier in the game as quarterback. It looks like Martinez in the backfield along with Balderas in the wing tee. And uh, Martinez gets Maybe a half a yard, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Neither no waiting for him on that one. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. They're just going to do that dive play. Third down. Let's keep it on the ground, guys. Do some razzle-dazzles. Do a double reverse. Do something. Snazz it up a little. Third and six for the Jackets. You want to get back in this game, you got to score here. Carl, how about those Astros? Let's do it. They'll be off tomorrow, travel day. Now they're going to play at least game six and seven. Game six Sunday. You'll have game seven on Monday. I will. So here is nothing. Sonia keeping and gets maybe another yard. Fourth down, do you go for it here, trailing? Uh, I think it's too early. Not that you, 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 you can't pass. They've scored. Needleton has scored their last three possessions. Thomas on all three possessions, touchdowns. You know, I, I think I'm rolling the dice here. Looks like they're going to roll the dice too. I might try to draw them off sides, and I might do the quarterback. Hard count and then try to draw them if you don't. And then punt it. Quick punt. Going for it. Got a man, and he got the ball separated from him. He was throwing to Joshua Williams. So another incomplete pass. Ball over on downs. For Sunier. What's his passing statistic? Zero of five. Oh, that's what I thought. I don't need to tell you the yardage. No. <laughs> I don't know. Enrique, did you figure that out? He's on his calculator. Oh. Zero for five. It's probably no yards. He's not paying attention. He's he's, he's watching the He's celebrating still for the Astros. He's watching the Phillies. He's already getting World Series tickets over there. All right, Needleton turnover on downs. Hands off to Thomas on a jet sweep. And he is going to go Flying down. That to jet. The Flying that jet on the sideline. 15 yard first down run by Thomas. Has about 13 yards. 
16th first down for the dogs. He just lines up on the left side at the slot position, comes back across and hands it off to him and he's gone. See if we can get a shot of who's in the backfield. I think they brought in a new back. They did. Cortez for my statistician over here. And they're going to throw it, and that's not going to work. That's a completion to Hunter James. No, check it. It's uh, Lander. Ladner. Landrum. Ladner. Ladner. It would be good if I flipped the right roster sheet up. Second down and let's call it nine. The ball spotted on the 41. They have to go to the 32 to get a first. Ladner's second catch for eight yards. Now Landry, 89 yard passing. That's his 13th completion. They have one first down on this drive. Uh, yes. Yeah. 16th. Yeah. There's just a big. There's a pass wide open, and uh, he kind of shot put it out to the 18. 23 yard pass completion to Ladner. Another first down. Here's a replay. He rolls to his right, and he's kind of got to wait for the ball. Taps it out at the 22. Let's call it a 19, no. 23 yard pickup. 23, is that what I said? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm not used to you telling me that I'm right. So uh, Mitchell, I think's in the backfield. That's a handoff to Mitchell. He's gonna break free, he's gonna score. It's a 19 yard touchdown run. Landon Mitchell. For Mitchell, that's his first touchdown of the evening. We're hearing that Texas A&M fight song, and Carl said we're hearing it here more than we have at A&M. Didn't hear it at Tennessee last week a bunch. My son-in-law is going to be mad if he heard me say that. Mitchell, number 24. Landon Mitchell with his first touchdown of the night. Kick is up, and it's good, and it's 35-7 to in favor of the Bulldogs. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production. We'll be right back. Give me that four drive summary of 55 yards. After Needland takes the ball over on downs, Needland moves 55 yards in four plays, takes 115 off the clock. Landon Mitchell with his first touchdown is on an 18 yard run. Lance Resch kicked good. Needland now leads 35 to seven, 548 left in the third quarter. Looks like he's kicking it deep. He is fielded at the five. And he's cutting right up the middle, and that is Combs. So he gets to the 32-yard line. Glenna Park picked up its second first down without penalty. They've had one each half. And as Carl said, less than 25 yards in the first half. And they, did they have 25 in the second? They're 13 in the first half, and they've got 16 in the second half. So let's go Yellow Jackets. Here's a fumble, and it's recovered, I think. Sonia fumbled, and it is a turnover. And just like that, the Yellow Jackets turned the ball over. Here's a replay. Let's watch it. He's trying to dribble the ball. It's finally recovered by uh, number 44, Gidros. So that's the, is that the second turnover or first? That's the first turnover, but they uh, 
went over on downs. Yeah, yeah, but forced turnover. So Needleman starts at their 29 yard line. And they still look like they're bringing out their. They might have changed quarterbacks. Let me see. It just doesn't look like the same guy. Uh, I believe they have in Case and Reedy, but I can't tell. They do. They have brought in number 17, Case and Reedy. And not unlike when you get a new quarterback, the cadence is off. And they start off with a legal procedure for five yards. That's just simply a different cadence, correct? That is correct. Five penalties for Nederland for 50 yards. First and 15 for the Bulldogs. Thomas still in the game. Has three rushing touchdowns. He takes the ball up the middle and he really gets blocked into by his receiver, Shepard, who was trying to block for him, knocked the Galena Park. What's this? Knocks him. Actually, he did just a great tackle by uh, Lewis Marshall. I thought he bumped him into him, but Marshall was had a heat-seeking missile there. So second down. The ball's on the 27. Second and eight. So after the penalty, got back down to the. Here's Thomas, and he's going to be taken out at the 23, so a four-yard pickup, going to bring third down. He kind of runs straight up, and he kind of glides, doesn't he? he? He runs straight up, and he's smooth. He kind of – he's not as big as a Eric Dickerson, but he, he runs – but Eric Dickerson, when he ran – he get past the line. He put it in the fifth gear. He's switching gears that no one had. Yeah. So Reedy in the shotgun looking to throw his first pass. Now he's going to keep it, and he has got a wide open field. He's going to go down to the 10, to the 5, down to the 3-yard line, 20-yard first down run by new quarterback Kaysen Reedy. There's a holding. That's why they had that big hole there. So that takes the first down away. And a big run for Reedy. On their roster sheet, they don't tell us whether they're freshmen, sophomore, juniors, seniors, or eight-year seniors. I, I have no clue. So. They had registered him twice. Yeah. But my, he, me, he might be like me where the hardest three years of his life was the third grade. Holding play at the line of scrimmage, third and 14 for the for Needleman. Let's see if they turn him loose and let him rip one down there. Bad snap. And completion. Six-yard pickup. Fourth down and eight for Nederland. Nederland to attempt a 44-yard field goal. Is that good? It is. It is 44, 44 yard. yard. Lynch Resch with the 44 yard field goal, right hash. That puts it up 38 to 7 with 310 left in the third quarter. We'll be right back.
Give me that four drive summary. Needle will move two yards in three plays after the hole penalty. Resch kicks a 44 yard field goal, his longest kick of the year. Needle now leads 38 to 7, 310 left in the third quarter. Now, how do you know that was the longest of the year? Uh, because it says right there that his 30, 39 yards was his longest kick. Is that why we leave the stats to you? That's the reason you leave them to me. All right, sir. He's the best. That's all I can tell you. Athleticsdepartment.com. You want to know whether the guy's hooked it to the left or right, just look up athleticsdepartment.com, and they'll, they'll let you know everything you need to know about statistics in high school football. So Galena Park takes over after the turnover led to a 44-yard field goal, 38-7. to seven. The Jackals start from their own 25-yard line. Hand off to Hernandez. That's Martinez. Check it. Three yards. Let's see where they mark it. Might have been only a yard. Yeah, about a one-yard gain. For a team that's given up 398 yards on defense, is that the ineptness of the offense of Galena Park, or are they just – Watched a lot of good films and handling this option offense. I think it's both. They, they're playing extremely well tonight. And they Clayton are. going through a new quarterback and have issues tonight. Yeah, Daniel Gomez not playing tonight. That probably hurts. There's a nice pass just barely out of the reach of the intended receiver, which is Zayas. Sonia I've, now 0 of 6 passing. I've seen uh, – Gomez down on the field. He's suited up. Not quite sure why he's not playing tonight. We never know. Third down. Puts him in that behind the chains mode and he keeps it. And he's gonna get back to about the 30 32, which is a six-yard game, but it's going to be short three yards. Fourth and three. So most likely they're going to punt here. And again, Galena Park with one first down so far in the second half. Two minutes left. So about Barboza comes in to his fourth punt. Punt again. This will be his first punt in the second half if they, in fact, punt it. To Zeno back for the punt return. Delay of the game. Atlanta Park's fifth penalty for 45 yards. Back it up to the 27-yard line, fourth and eight. So if this holds up. Needlerland will be four and one in district. And Atlanta Park one and four. And the favorites in that district. Port Nature is still undefeated, and Texas City only loss was to Port Natchez. Yeah. There's a fake, and there's a pass, and it, it was complete. executed perfect. So it was thrown the up back by through. Merlin, and he throws it to Zayas, and they get a first down. 14-yard pickup on a fourth and eight play. And I don't know who's more excited, Zayas or the guy that threw the pass, which was Merlin. Merlin, who's Merlin listed, the magician. Who's listed as a, uh, a pass defensive thrower. back. So that's a first down uh, brought to you by Pasco Law Firm. When you win, we win. And the fake punt. So this constitutes the same drive. Got a nine-yard gain. 
And we got some extracurricular down here. They're arguing over whether they're going to go eat at Blue Bayou Cafe or Bonfire Wings. And one said gumbo was better, and the other one said seafood was better. <laughs> we'll look. We'll let the referees sort it out. I think it's going to be offsetting. What do you think? I don't know. Did they throw flags on both sides over there? They had marked it close to a first down. They did. It was a first down. So Ten-yard pickup. That's a first down brought to you by Pasco Law Firm. When you win, we win. The Texas GOAT. Jackets six first down. 20 seconds left. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Handoff up the middle, and that is Valderas. He, he ran hard. He got like eight yards. That will be the last play of the third quarter. That's going to be the end of the third quarter with your score, 38-7 to seven in favor of the Bulldogs. You're watching big game coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Production with Enrique and Chris. We'll be right back. All right, we got the start of the fourth quarter. Second down and two. Galena Park started the drive on their on 25-yard line. Have two first downs after a fake punt that turned into a first down where we had a completion to Zayas. Uh, couldn't complete it with the quarterback, so they did a fake. And Merlin, who was the blocking back for the punter, through it and great play. Now we have another flag. I think Galena Park receiver took off too fast, but let's see. False start. That, those things kill you. They're on a good roll here. They have two first downs, ball controlled, and then they get a five yard penalty. The good thing is it's only second down. And this is definitely four down territory. Unlike last week, they are stopping the clock. There's a handoff to the left side and that's gonna be a great run for a first down. There's some more extra correct activity and they need to give a penalty to that young man Mr. Sturrock needs to go sit down. So that was Garan that gets another first down. And then uh, we had some extra curricular activity. I think the referees having a little powwow saying we're, we're through with this, fellas. I'm not sure why they didn't call a penalty on number 50. Now he might have been retaliating. I didn't see, but. Picks up five. First down, first down and 10. Seventh first down for the Jackets. Three on this drive. That's a record. So here's a handoff. And I believe that's to Balderas. Pickup of two, tackled by Hollifield again. Both teams have three timeouts. Not quite sure either one of them would use them in this kind of game, 38 to seven. Galena Park losing last week, 50 to 23. And Nederland losing 21-19. So one of these teams is gonna snap a losing streak. There's a blown play. 
Sanye. Sanye gets hit. So now, as my good friend says, they are behind the chains. Third and 11. I guess when the box marker is past the 10 yards, you're behind the chains. Yeah. Especially Galena Park not being able to throw the ball as well as some teams. Maybe they need to bring Merlin in here to throw. On a trick play from pump formation again. Yeah. So he's got time, got a man open, and <laughs> overthrew him. Well, he threw a bullet for a 10 yard pass, and it, it went through the hands. I think Carl's right, it went through Zaya's hands, but he threw it so hard. So now you have a fourth and 11. You definitely got to throw it. Hopefully this time, if he's going to roll him out of the pocket, he rolls left to his left and not to his right, try to throw across his body. Sonia, left-handed quarterback. But they're on the left hash, hash mark. mark, so it makes it tough because there's not much room. They got to get a good block by the defensive end. Now he looks, and that's just a bad pass. Intercepted. It is intercepted by Ladner, who also plays offensive receiver. So Ladner, with a turnover, wants to take time to, as you watch the replay of the interception, to tell you if you have any electrical needs, call Mr. Electric. That's Mr. Electric for any kind of things that you need done around the house that has to do with the need of electrician, call Mr. Electric. Also, if you are looking for a new vehicle or a used vehicle, call McCree Ford, M-C-R-E-E. -E. That's my dealer, call McCree Ford. Reading him back at quarterback. Yep, throws a quick, quick out for about five yards. Throws to Shepard. So Reedy. Second down, and let's call it five. They need to wake up the clock operators down there. They're still celebrating the Astros win. How about those Astros? I knew when we were watching them at Blue Bayou Cafe that after that one nothing home run by Bregman, they had it in the bag. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, that's exactly what you yeah, said. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> Mitchell met at the line of scrimmage. Let's admit it, when they were down by two in the ninth inning, I thought it was over. Y'all were both saying, no, 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 we're going to win. And you and Enrique were correct. Mitchell loses two, third and seven. So if you think negative and they do something positive, you're a lot more happy. That's right. That's that reverse psychology. Third all you, down. All you want to do is get it to seven. <laughs> That's right. Actually, I'd like to see him win it six and just go to the World Series. There you go. So you, You'd work two games, right? Yep. Reedy rolling out and scrambling gets to the 10, loses two yards or a yard. Yeah, I don't know what the schedule would be yet, but I'll figure all that later. I think the Astros, <coughs> if I heard right, the Phillies would be the home team and the Astros would have the three middle games. So they would play three consecutive nights. Lentz Resch back into punt. This will be his second punt, one first half punt. He's probably forgot how to punt. Sure has kicked well. Yes, he has. Kicked a long 44-yard field goal, high pass. That, uh, oh, did he drop it? Yep. Fumbled by Villarreal. Villarreal muffed on the, on the line drive. Here's a punt. replay. 26-yard punt from Resch. 
comes up, drops the ball, and recovered by the running back. Mitchell, Landon Mitchell recovered that. So a Mitchell recovery. Third fumble by Galena Park. Second loss fumble. Another turnover. We got a timeout on the field. I think we're going to take it with us. You're listening to the big game coverage. We'll be right back. So I want to remind everybody that uh, Galena Park and North Shore play back home next week. We'll have both games, right, here on big game coverage? Yep. Is Galena Park playing Thursday? That's correct. North Shore is playing Friday. Who's uh, Galena Park playing? Galena Park will play. I know that North Shore is playing Atascacita for the district title. District title for the seventh year in a row. I wasn't quite sure. Most likely, as you said earlier in the season, Atascacita and North Shore are going to meet each other twice. And both teams will be are in the state playoffs. Both teams will be Division One. Winner will go as the district champion. Loser will be the second seed. North Shore ranked number one in the state with the new rankings, and Atascacita fourth with Duncanville and South Lake Carroll in between. So there's the man that recovered the fumble, Mitchell, with a two-yard gain. So Galena Park will drop to three and five. And Nederland will improve to four and four. After playing a lot of Division 6A, and there are non-district games. And a lot of division, 5A Division I teams. Yeah. Larger enrollment. So here's a quick toss. Reedy toss. And he threw it to new receiver. Gavin Johnson. Picked up almost to a first down. Seven yard pickup, third down and one. That's what I like about second stringers coming in. They, they let them play ball. They're, they throw it. Last night, North Shore, the, the backups, they didn't let them throw or run the offense, really. Or they Either that or the offensive line was doing so good, bad against the defense. They let Umble back into that game. I think it was both. So a handoff, and that is to Mitchell straight up the middle. Picks up about four, gets a first down. 19th first down for the dogs. Going to go up to the 48-yard line, five-yard pickup. 4.15 left. As I said earlier, both teams have their timeouts. We're hoping they don't use them. Neyland's done a good job, ball control. Coach Barrow would like like to see this four minutes of race by a second team, second team offense. Right now they're doing a great job. Really, these teams have a hard time putting a second team out there, don't they? A complete set. That's Mitchell. Mitchell not wanting to go out of bounds, cut it back up. Gonna get one yard. You know, they have about 48 men on their roster for Nederland. So, and I think Galena Park probably has a little more than that for it's a home about, game. It's about the average size, five division two. Yeah. So they can they can put two teams on the field for sure. 
but they certainly don't have a third string. There is a three penalty flags coming out and the ball loose. That's a new running back. I thought it was. Uh, he looked a little lost. Aiden Hewitt. They have a bunch of new fellows out on the field. They have uh, Try to Co. Try Tico. Sorry. Holding penalty against Bulldogs. Decline. Two penalties. Two holding. Still going to be second down. Here's a replay. You can see one right there. 67. And then there's the other one down below here. So they, they threw two flags, both at the feet of the offensive lineman. So now it's second. Second 19. They get to get all the way to the 42. And the ball is on the 39. Needling seventh penalty for 70 yards. There's a quick toss. Caught. That breaks free for about seven yards. That is Johnson. to Johnson. You know, the crowd is stuck around, Carl. They really have. Not a lot of people hitting the exit. They're not having to rush to watch the Astros. The Astros already won. They're here. Third and 12. Third and... 12. And the shotgun, man in motion there. That was Stoker. And he is hammered here. That is Hewitt, I believe. And is he still moving? Yeah, he's still moving. More sideways, maybe three yards, fourth down. Well, with 128 left, do you let this second stringer throw with the ball or do you just punt it again? I'm trying to punt it again. Think so? I'm like, uh, turn him loose. You got a 38 7 lead, one minute left in the game. See, we see what the guy got has got. They're saying, hurry up, hurry up before the coach changes his mind. I want to throw the ball. So he rolls to his left. Yep, and threw it to double coverage, and Carl probably said, I told you he should have punted. If he had completed it, it would have been five yards short of the mark. He didn't too, do too bad there, though. He nice roll out to his left, and planted his feet and uh, that was his first incompletion reading really now four or five passing so let's see who Galena Park brings back in 49 seconds left in the contest they were warming up uh, here he is Flores Oswaldo Flores senior comes in with 49 seconds left in the ball game Now what are they doing? I think Galena Park called a timeout. So I want to uh, talk to you, Carl, about serious matter here. Okay. We have a game next Thursday and a game next Friday. Okay. So I think we ought to go to Bonfire Wings on Thursday. Okay. And eat some gumbo and some wings. Okay. And then on Friday, I think we ought to go back to Blue Bayou Cafe and maybe try something else different. That sounds good to me. I got to have gumbo at both, though. I'm going to try something different at both places. Yeah. There's a handoff. Is that a fumble? So, Mia on the handoff from our new quarterback, which is. Flores. Flores. This should be the last play of the ball game. 
So they put uh, Cortez in motion and handed it to him. He gets about three yards and tackled by about seven white shirts. And they're going to start lining up at the 50. Ten seconds left. Unless they're going to try to get off another play here. I think they're, they've had enough. So your final score, 38-7, to Nederland. We're going to come back here in about a minute or so and have a drive of the game and maybe talk a little bit about tomorrow's game on BGC coverage. And uh, then we're going to wrap it up. You're watching Big Game Coverage powered by Legacy Sports Network and Texas Sports Productions. Welcome back to Big Game Coverage. Final score, 38-7. to seven. As I was saying earlier, you can watch the Big Game app. So there you see the schedule for the weekend. They had five games yesterday, eight, eight games. games tonight, and then two tomorrow. And always on Saturday, which I like, you get a – game at one o'clock and it's usually featuring Carl Thies down at Fort Bend, right? That's it. I'm at Mercer at one o'clock tomorrow for the Kempner, Fulcher and Kempner game. And at Kempner Mercer. state rated, so that's a good team. No, right? Fulcher. Fulcher, Fulcher I mean, sorry. Yeah, they're and second they, site. Cashmere and Wheatley. So uh, at this time of the game, Enrique and Carl, you know, I didn't even get a vote. That's just wrong. Uh, come out and they uh, give the drive or the drive of the game. So take it away, Mr. Thies. After leading, that's going to go. This is going to be uh, Hubert Thomas, his third touchdown of the game. That's going to be a, a long run in a 64-7 play drive. And that put Needling up 28-7. to That's our drive of the game. So there you have it. Great job being by Enrique. Did Chris do anything tonight except go and he ate run pizzas? pizzas? He ate pizzas. Yeah, I think Chris, but he's learning. They're going to turn him loose. We might have him with us in a couple weeks. So for those two gentlemen and Carl Thies and Rick Blunt, we'll see you next Thursday night as the uh, Galena Park Yellow Jackets are back here at home. And then we'll have Friday night with the Mustangs taking on Atasca Seed, and I promise you, that's going to be the game of the year in Nor in Houston with high school sports. You do not want to miss that game next Friday night here on the Big Game Network. We'll be seeing you next week. God bless you and have a great weekend.